Um, what did your parents do? Uh, my mother was a legal secretary. My father was a factory worker. Okay. Uh, we're all baby boomers. My father uh, served in World War II, and when um, he came home from the war, uh, my uh, parents um, did what everybody else did and uh, have lots of kids. So there, there are uh, four of us. Uh -huh. um, my older sister is an art curator. And she still does some of that in New York. Uh -huh. um, my twin sister uh, is, uh, was a, um, a medical publisher. Uh, she was the uh, president of Churchill Livingstone at, one, uh, at, at a point in her career. She's now uh, retired. And my brother uh, is a, a malpractice attorney. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, except for the art, we had a lot of um, a lot of medicine in, uh, in our family. To get in there. <laughs> How did you all end up in with an interest in medicine? <laughs> I, I can't explain that. Oh. I can only explain that it was an interest in education. Oh, okay. My um, uh, parents, but especially my mother, felt very strongly that. Um, uh, education was a, an important part of our life mm -hmm. and um, we we went back to New Brunswick to St. Peter's High School which is closed now mm -hmm. but uh, that was the place to go okay. and uh, my older sister went uh, to Marymount Manhattan mm -hmm. uh, my twin sister went to Mary Wooden Scranton my brother went to St. Joe's in Philly and Catholic University for law oh, school I'm guessing you were a Catholic family, we're a Catholic family. <laughs> And uh, I went to St. Francis Nursing School yes. and then um, worked for five years in intensive care and then went back and got a BSN at Rutgers College of right. Nursing mm -hmm. and then a, a graduate degree in administration at um, Ryder. And where did you meet your husband? Well, you know, my mother is no longer living, so I can tell you now I met him <laughs> at, at a bar. <laughs> something I kept from my mother for years. Fair enough. <laughs> she won't read this. <laughs> I'm sure, and I'm sure she wouldn't have had a problem in the end. Yeah, I met my, um, I went, after I, I graduated from nursing school at St. Francis in Trenton, mm -hmm. I stayed and worked at uh, St. Francis in Trenton. So there was a whole a group of us that actually we all graduated together. We, you know, met our husbands around the same time mm -hmm. and we're still uh, dear friends and, um, we're all still married to our first husband. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an interesting. <laughs> well, my husband passed well, your, away, your, but your late husband. But I yeah. think you, uh, 49 years you were married. Long, yeah, long oh, time. My um, God bless you. <laughs> um, so nursing. When you decided to get into nursing, was it what you expected? Did you love it? Did you like it? And you know, do it yeah. for a little bit and then decide to go for more education. Yeah. What was your thinking? Uh, I absolutely loved it. Uh, I always wanted to be a nurse. I don't know why. I don't know what motivated me, um, but I always, always wanted to be a nurse. And I never regretted for a minute that I went to nursing school. Never regretted for a minute that I, wor I was an intensive care nurse. That I worked at ICU for uh, five years about, I guess. Then I got into like some nursing education and um, sort of just moved more towards administration because it always made sense to me even as a young nurse that individuals with clinical knowledge are in the best position to run hospitals. I couldn't understand why perhaps they didn't have clinical knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, so my career just kind of took off in that direction mm -hmm. and I, I tell this story all the time. I um, finished my graduate degree and I was working in the quality division of the hospital. I was back at St. Francis and uh, I'm Sister Agnes uh, O'Brien, uh, God bless her today. <laughs> she came to me and said, you know, Judy, there's a system called DRGs coming out and we have to merge the uh, clinical with the financial. You know, would you consider working in the finance division? You finished your graduate degree. Uh, you know, I, I'd like you to consider that. And I can remember as clearly as yesterday, I said, oh, no, sister, um, you know, quality is my life. I love this job. This is exactly what I want to do. And I kind of embellished this a bit, but I, I have told it in front of her years ago that I came in on Monday and my, my desk was moved to the finance division. It was the best move. 
uh, in my career because it really taught me a lot about um, the whole side of uh, this huge, you know, medical complex and how it's paid for and what the issues are. So I had uh, I had great experience. I guess I was in finance, maybe three years or so, might have been longer. And once you have someone with clinical knowledge, a little finance acumen, um, I, I think then it's sort of an inflection point, what I call an inflection point mm -hmm. in your career. We all have them. Sometimes you have that inflection point and you go down. Sometimes you have that inflection point and you go up. That was the inflection point in my career. And I started going more into administration and learning, quite frankly, learning to make a difference in the lives of more people than one patient at a time. And that was difficult. Mm -hmm. The satisfaction of nurses is knowing that you've made a difference at the end of the day, no matter how hard the day is, that you made a difference in the lives of those people that you directly touched. Mm -hmm. And that is a, just such a wonderful part of being a nurse. And as you move up the ladder, you need to move away from that and realize, well, a decision I make today will make the lives of a department better, a community better, and it starts expanding. And you need to internalize that as a nurse because you're not in that one-to-one -one touch. Mm -hmm. That was my most difficult transition. Right. What were your challenges in, in being often the first woman and the first nurse in those jobs? You know, they're the challenges that women, um, and I don't want to, I was not a pioneer. There were women before me that, you know, I stand on their shoulders. But it's the same challenge. You're, you know, sit in a room and you're the only woman, and whether it's a, a boardroom or then you say something and nobody really pays attention to it, no matter how insightful it is. Mm -hmm. And then a guy says it. And it's like, oh, that's a great idea. And you sit there and you learn from those experiences. You have a choice. You can, um, you can get angry about it. You can get frustrated. I probably have gotten all of those things. Or you can also, along with those emotions, learn from it and sort of examine your own way of presentation, your own way of sensing a group and where you the, the asset that you bring to the table that, frankly, not ever, that others don't have because they're not nurses. They don't have clinical knowledge in most cases. Right. So you have to really have to, you have to have really good sensing skills. You have to learn to make your narrative much more direct and uh, deliberative and uh, specific. Um, through this, as you're rising up here, I know your husband had a parallel career where he was rising up and then ended up in politics. <laughs> and, uh, well, a small town. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about him and, and your life together. Yeah, we were lucky. You know, well, I was young when I got married. Um, he was a, a little bit older, not much. Um, but we were lucky. Um, we had a relationship that, um, you know, certainly... Now, in retrospect, I think people would be very envious of. Um, we supported one another. It's hard for me to talk about it. I don't want to make you cry, and I know um, you can stop at any time. Okay. It's fine. Um, yeah, and my condolences. I mean, this is a tough year for you, yes. and then quite a year for you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it kind of went off the rails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I want to give him his due, and uh, and... I know uh, he had a fascinating life too. He had a and fascinating he was life, on paths, and he was of, right? he was good. He was great in his own career, and he was a wonderful mayor. Mm -hmm. um, and people had nice things to say about him. I read oh yeah. Oh every. Oh people loved him more than they loved me. I can tell you that. <laughs> and he knows more people in Pennington than I know. Mm -hmm. But I have never heard anyone uh, say a bad word about him at all. Mm -hmm. He was special. 